Hey guys. Hello? Hello? Oh, there you are. Look what just came in today. This all came in from Europe. We did a German auction and it's taken us about six months. They just came in. Being six months old, I don't remember what I bid on and won. I do know there's Lugers in here and I know there's some broom handles in here, but I don't know what else is in here. So you're gonna wanna watch and find out. We're gonna cut into these suckers. You know what I bet is not in here? I'll bet there are no oven mitts, but let's find out. Here it is. Now I know all of you will say, I wish I could be you. I could wish I could have your job. This is a lot of work to import these guns. And actually this is not all the guns we imported because several of them went to ATF because they were rejected and we appealed and they said they would look at them. So for example, we got a Model 6 uh, Walther, which is a very rare gun, Model 6 Walther, and Customs rejected it, even though it is perfectly legal. But believe it or not, sometimes when you deal with a government agency, you get somebody who doesn't know that, what they're talking about. No offense to the, those of you out there. We need more of you who are competent to, uh, to do this. But we did appeal uh, three or four guns and we're waiting to hear back. I think all of them will be fine. According to the rules, they should be fine. So we're just waiting to hear back. But uh, I'm gonna go th through some of these with you. I also wanna show you what's on the floor just to let you know. Uh, first and foremost, I'm gonna cherry pick a few things and offer them to our VIP patron uh, level members. Uh, give them first shot at some of these, but there's something here for everybody. So if you're looking for some Lugers, got lots of Lugers, we got PPs. PPKs, by the way, are among my favorite gun, but we cannot import PPKs because of the barrel length. It's only a half, half inch too short, but we never can get um, PPKs imported into the country, but we did get some PPs. Down here on the floor, you can see we have some, some broom handle rigs and I'm not gonna open them up all now. Um, I, anything that's really unusual, I'll do a separate video on, but you see quite a few uh, broom handle rigs. Uh, here's a red nine, of course, another broom handle rig there. Uh, here you can see an artillery uh, Luger rig. I think that's a 1917. It's a beautiful gun. Actually, you can see it's a 1918, obviously all original. Uh, Three-digit code with halos around it and halos around uh, the serial number on the barrel. So that's a good one. That's just one of the highlights. This one comes with a stock. Uh, over here, this stock probably goes with one of the Navy guns over there. Uh, if you'll notice a very tiny Navy marking and a property marking here. Um, and it is serial numbered, so hopefully it'll match one of the guns we have over there, but this was packed separately. It is a Navy stock, pretty rare. And then you see um, other Lugers. Uh, we'll find some treasures in here. This is kind of a rare commercial holster. Have the maker on the back. Uh, I think it's from uh, maybe the 1920s or 30s. Uh, but it's kind of a rare holster, and I'm sure it goes with one of the Lugers over here. Let's take a look at the Lugers. Again, I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, but we see this is a Krigoff, 1940 Krigoff. I'm going to get a lot of interest in this. Let me just see if it has a matching magazine. Voila. You'll have to wait and see it. <laughs> all right, I'll show you. Uh, it does have a matching magazine. Uh, 1940 Krigoff. Fortunately or unfortunately, somebody said that famously just recently, there's going to be a lot of interest in this, so it's going to be expensive. And there's a S-code Krigoff. I, I know this one has the early Ritz grips and does not have a matching magazine. Um, this one is a um, death's head. Uh, those are also very desirable for collectors. This one is a K-date with a matching magazine. There's the magazine, K-Date, with a matching magazine. A lot of people are gonna want, again, fortunately or unfortunately for you as a buyer, um, there's gonna be a lot of interest in it. Fortunate for me, because I went to a lot of trouble to get these uh, to Legacy, and um, hopefully it'll pay off. Uh, Simpson, dated 1925. Simpson markings all over this. Um, in fact, the screws have a Simpson proof on a fire blue. 
Simpson proof, both screws, and it has a matching magazine. Again, very desirable. Uh, this looks like another Krig off because you can tell from the grips and you can see 1936. Uh, this one does not have a matching magazine, but I believe it's close. And just for, um, just for giggles, uh, we, we got a Python. Uh, so a 357 Magnum Python with, um, this looks like the correct grips, and we'll probably swap those out. This group here, these are all rigs, of course, but I think all of these are navies. Uh, this happens to be a G-date navy. By the way, you can, see, you can see the navy marking right there. And then this is a G-date, and the O property mark makes it a navy G-date. Uh, let's see what this one is. This one is a 1940 Mauser. It does have the N, N as in North Sea property mark with the Navy magazine N property marked and they are matching. We'll have to take a closer look at that one. Here's another one I believe is Navy. This one is 1936 and we have an N property mark again on the back. It comes with a Navy magazine, but the uh, property marks uh, and the serial numbers do not match. Let's see what other navies we have, because we have a lot of collectors who like navies. Here's a 1937. So we, we had G-Date, we had 1936, 1937. I believe we had 1940. Uh, this is a 37, which is, um, if you have my book on Third Reich Lugers, uh, this is a rare, a rare year to find navy, and that does look all correct. While it has the O here, OTC, uh, it would not be... Um, property marked on the magazine because they didn't do that for the Oats Sea. Uh, East Sea is, I, I'll go with the English, East Sea. Now, don't remember if this is, oh, look at that, rare magazine. Uh, just joking, that's a, a placeholder. Not sure, oh yeah, there it is. There's a Navy marking here. This is 1938. This is actually one of the more, none of them are common, but one of the more common years for the Navy was uh, 38, made uh, more of them in 38. Again, you can find that in my book. Because of the size of this, we know this is from World War I. Uh, this is a Navy, and actually it's Portuguese. Looks like a Navy holster, but it's actually Portuguese. Uh, that's more for the advanced collector to figure out, but it looks just like a Navy holster, but again, it's not. But this is a Navy Luger. It would be a 1906 because it has the uh, grip safety. Also, uh, tor torpedo division. I'll have to look this up in Dave Mulchin's book because he does list uh, his book. We offer it on our site. Uh, it lists the serial numbers and uh, uh, goes over which ones are known to be uh, real and which ones are known to be fake. We'll check this out, but from what I see, it does look correct. So again, a model 1906 Navy, uh, probably used in the World War I era. And this is a P-38 holster, but I was going to say, but what's in it? And there it is. It's P-38, BYF-43, um, pretty nice. So I think that's the end of the navies, but this is a 34 holster from what I can see uh, because they had a 30, uh, 34 holster uh, made by Mauser would be K-8, and it would have the uh, cleaning rod. Um, but let's see if it, it yep, it's a K-8. It has one matching magazine, which I don't think is correct, but it is a matching magazine, but not necessarily original factory. Looks like the font is a little bit different. And from memory, I think this has two matching magazines. Yes, two matching magazines, but that's a little easier to do when you can make them yourself. So the gun looks fine. I'll, again, I'll check it out real carefully before we sell it. The gun looks pretty good, but the two matching magazines are forced matched. Uh, some people will comment and say forced match equals faked. A uh, pretty nice holster was dyed black, but it's dated 1915, so that's kind of rare, in pretty good shape. It's obviously been dyed black, but uh, sometimes they were ordered dyed black, and that was done by the Germans. This is a reworked World War I gun. Yeah, it's a World War I era gun, uh, reworked for the police, and there's a 1920 marking indicating it was reworked. Uh, pretty nice gun. And then finally, this is an interesting rig in that... Um, this is a Portuguese holster, 
And when you open it up, you think, oh, here is a Black Widow. It does look like a Black Widow, but it comes with a blank bottom aluminum magazine. And this actually from the M block, and we just talked about this when we looked at a Portuguese Luger that was phosphated. This one is a blued Portuguese Luger, BYF42 in the M block. We're gonna run out of time, so let's just go through the rest of these really quickly. Okay, now Walther's. Uh, this one has a plum finish to it. It is Waffen proof and it has the red grips. Just love the red grips with the plum finish, correct magazine. Gives you a pretty good idea. It's not pristine, but it is uh, desirable. Uh, this one is kind of beat up, and so I'm sure I bought it as a shooter grade. This is a box gun. Uh, this is a Swedish uh, retailer. So that name on there tells me that it's a Swedish uh, issued Walther PP. Uh, you can see that. We'll be taking a more look at that. And then I got some guns that I, I <laughs> this one I know is Persian. Not in great shape, but it's pretty rare. Came in nine millimeter, Persian crest. Uh, and there's, it just has unusual markings because it has the Walther banner here, whereas the typical Walther doesn't have the banner here. It has it right here, both PP and PPK. But on the Persian, they made room for the Persian crest and the Farsi writing here. Uh, that was issued to the Persian police during the war. Actually, I think this is 1938. You can see it's a little bit different, but compare that to this one. I don't remember, other than I think it's Turkish. It has been refinished because this looks a bit polished. Um, and believe it or not, I'll ask help from you on a Walther. I'm not sure, some of you might know, I think this is a Turkish contract gun. And again, the Walther banner over on this side instead of this side. And there is Farsi writing right here. Let's see if it's nine millimeter. Nope, it's 7.65 and it has a wartime magazine. So that's kind of a mystery gun. I'll do a little bit of work on that. Uh, here's one that a bunch of you want. And again, I, I will offer it to our VIP members first and foremost. It's an NSKK. Um, pretty hard to find these days. Even when people are selling their collection, this is one of the last ones they're gonna get rid of. But it's an NSKK in the correct serial range from about 19, 38 or 39, um, and you can see that. This is a French Sackham made during the Nazi occupation. And this one I put on the end just because it has a lanyard that's so long it got in the way, but it is a BYF 42. So a lot of great guns. Uh, we have a lot to go through, and I just have to see if I'm gonna make my money back and a little bit of profit. That's the American way, you buy and sell. Uh, make a margin and you stay in business. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned because a lot of these guns are going to be loaded onto the website uh, in the next week or two.